In this short lecture, we're going to be solving an example problem using energy balances. So we're going to start out with a simple problem. A cube of 15 centimeters on each side is heated from the bottom with a uniform heat flux of Q double prime equals 3000 watts per meter squared. The process is at steady state with no generation occurring inside the cube. Assuming that heat leaves all the remaining sides of the box uniformly, what is the total heat flux leaving the box? So I'm going to give you some time, or hit pause I guess, and if you want time to think about how you would solve this, and feel free to go ahead and try to solve it, and then I'll go through ahead and work. So for me, I would first define my system boundaries. So I would say, okay, this box itself is my system. So the control volume would be the volume inside of the box itself. I would then start to think about how is energy getting in and out. So we know it's heated from the bottom. Somehow energy is getting into our system. And how is it going to be leaving? Well, it's going to be leaving likely by convection, but we don't necessarily even need to know that. Out uniformly out all the other sides of the box. So I'm going to call this in term Q double prime in, and I'm going to call what's leaving Q double prime out. So we want to find what's going out. So after we define our system and figure out how is energy getting in and out, we will do our energy balance. So remember this is accumulation, and then we have in, out, and generation, which could also be consumption. So let's go through and carefully define each of these terms. So how is energy accumulating in our system? Remember, it will typically use the rate form of the energy balance in this class. So the accumulation term would be the change in total energy inside of our box with time. So what is that term? How do we quantify it? So there are some key words here to pay attention to. So the process is at steady state, which means that nothing is changing over time. So that means DE DT, nothing is changing over time, so the rate of change is going to be zero. So we don't even need to worry about an accumulation term in this case because we're just dealing with a steady state problem. So that'll just be zero. Okay, how is energy getting into our system? Well, we know that it's coming in from the bottom somehow. But it's very important. I like to be consistent and for this problem I would prefer to use the rate of change form as I mentioned which has units of watts. So this flux does not have units of watts. We need to get the total amount of energy coming in and to do so we would multiply the flux by the area on the bottom of the cube. So I'm just going to define A is equal to the area of one side of cube. And you can certainly do this differently. You could actually plug in a width and a length and figure out what the actual area is. We could always do that later. So now I'm just going to say Q in multiplied by the area of that one side of the cube. Okay, how is energy getting out? Well, we don't know that exactly either. Most likely convection, it could also be radiation. It could actually be conduction too if our solid here were bumped up against another solid. We're not told that and it doesn't really matter for this particular problem. But we know that we're losing energy based on this flux going out multiplied by, so again we have this flux going out, Q double prime out, but we don't know um, the total rate of energy. We need to multiply our flux by the total surface area that that flux would be leaving. So because it's a cube that has six sides, Energy is coming in one side, but it's leaving all the other sides uniformly. So our area there would be 5 times A. And in this particular problem, we're not told anything about generation, so it's safe to assume that there is no generation. So we would now take our, um, our defined terms from the balance and put those into equation form. So we'd get accumulation equals in minus out plus generation. So while we've defined this out term as a positive, I mean, we've assumed that the energy out term is going to be positive, but then we'll pick up this negative as we plug it in and subtract off the energy leaving our system. So we end up with zero 
equals q double prime in times a minus q double prime out times 5a. And we could rearrange this equation and we would end up with q double prime out. It's actually convenient here because the a's are just going to cancel out so we never even had to use the side, the width of each side. So q out is equal to q in, and I'm doing some of this math just in my head but it's easy, q in divided by 5. So we've gotten to this point just with using algebra. It's really important to just carefully define your system to come up with an algebraic equation. So now we've got this algebraic equation. And if we make mistakes, we can go back and check our algebra. But we want to get it into this nice algebraic form before we plug in any numbers. So that we would then plug in this Q in of 3000, which would give us that our Q out is equal to 600 watts per meter squared. All right, so that was a simpler problem, but it is really important to try and get this energy balance system way of solving problems working for you.